drought cycle is kind of visited on different parts of the country, and I think right now the focus is really on California and other parts of the West uh, that have had lots of droughts. And so currently we're seeing a lot of wildfires and other impacts that you would expect from prolonged drought over several years' time. The good news is with lower rainfall, we don't get as much plant growth, so you get less fuel load, which can help the wildfire picture. But in general, everything dries out a lot faster and it ex extends the fire season. This year, we actually had wildfires in December and January here in California. So there actually was no break in the wildfire season. And the drought is another good example of how we are all connected in ways that, that we often aren't aware of until something happens to, to one of those connections. So uh, something you're all seeing right now, the drought in the Midwest a couple of years ago caused a lot of ranchers to sell off their cattle herds. So as a result, uh, the price of beef is way higher than it's ever been. And that's from a drought a couple of years ago in someplace else, but it happens when I go to the grocery store here now in California, I see that. If we start to reduce water available for agriculture, and that's a lot of lettuce and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and artichokes and other things that aren't available that are consumed across the country. So, especially in California, the minute we start to take agricultural land out of production to save water, then everybody consumes our, our fruit and vegetables. Everyone's going to feel the pinch, especially when they go to the grocery store to buy that. The price is going to go up and or you're going to see produce that's flown in from halfway around the world to take its place. And there's a huge carbon footprint with that alternative. So, there are lots of ripple effects. There are ways that Fresh water gets away from us that we don't think about very much. For example, a lot of water is used for irrigation. Uh, people that are trying to maintain lawns and landscapes, and I know landscapes are beautiful and they're expensive, but it's also a big use of water around residential areas. And maybe we can cut back on the amount of water that goes into maintaining a landscape. You may have to change out some of the plants to things that are tolerant uh, of uh, drier conditions. But even just when you put water out during the daytime, it evaporates and less of it gets into the root zone where it's needed. So irrigating early in the morning or, or at night may be helpful. And those are all things that we can cut back on without really impacting our lives that much at all. And it just, it has to be a little more top of mind and, and you have to realize it adds up very quickly just turning that tap back off. I don't think we realize how important water is for wildlife and agriculture. So every drop of water that I save, I figure that's more water for a fish to swim in, more water for a farmer to, to grow some crops with, but, because I like to eat almost as much as I like to drink water. So uh, we're all in this together. Again, anything we're doing related to our climate, it takes a long time for that to ramp up. It's gonna take a long time for it to slow down. It's kind of like putting the brakes on a, on a train. Put the brakes on now, it's gonna take that train a couple of miles to stop, but it will stop. And if we can put the brakes on now to what we're doing in terms of adding greenhouse gases, eventually those changes in the climate will slow down, stop, and reverse themselves. It might take a long time for them to reverse themselves, or Mother Nature might surprise us with jumping back more rapidly than we might predict.